I am continuing in the series I started last week, Staying Fit. And last week I got into a little bit, uh, two points uh, I finished last week on the symptoms of an orphan spirit. And I'm continuing that this morning, symptoms of an orphan spirit. But let me read our scripture for this series. It's 1 Thessalonians 5.23. And it says this, May God himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole. Everybody say that with me. Holy and whole. How many know it's very difficult to be holy if you're not whole? Very difficult. If you're not a, if you're not a whole person, you will find yourself continually going back into the sin that easily besets you. Because a lot of times it's, it's wounds and scars and it's, it's sores that you have in your soul. And like I told you last week, the devil attaches a demon to every wound. And because of that, you will find yourself continually afflicted in your soul. So if we're going to move into holiness, we have to be whole. So God wants to make you holy and whole. It goes on to say, make you holy and whole, put you together, spirit, soul, and body, and keep you fit. Everybody say fit. For the coming of our master, Jesus Christ. Now, we started last week on symptoms of an orphan spirit. And I define an orphan as this, as anyone who cannot find a home. An orphan is someone who had parents or didn't have parents who was never parented. So it's a person who was never given the structure, the identity, and because of that, they have pieces of of an orphan. They have an orphan spirit that the Lord has to heal them from for them to move into wholeness and holiness. Now, the word health, the word wholeness, and the word holiness all come from the same root word. So, if you are going to be holy and whole, first, you have to receive the healing of the Lord. You know, they have a lot of people in church that can sing, prophesy, preach, that are filled with the Holy Spirit that are orphans in their heart. They have unresolved pain and conflict. They are fatherless people. And until they come into wholeness, they will really never, ever move in the joy of the Lord and the peace of God and, and, and move into all God has for them. So the vision of, of God for every person is this. Hear me. God wants you to move from being an orphan to being a son and daughter to being a father. That's the progression the Lord wants to move your life. So he, he doesn't want you to be a person that, that is an orphan the rest of your Christian day. Some people are. Some people are never able to move beyond unresolved pain and conflict. But God wants you to move into sonship so that you can be a father or mother in the house. How many would say amen to that? So sonship is revelation that God wants to release into your heart to where you realize, okay, I am a son or daughter of the Most High. I believe it. I accept it. It's a spirit of adoption that comes upon you. And so this is what we're receiving from the Lord. Scriptures I gave you last week, I'm just going to give them quickly to you again. John 14, 18. Jesus said, I promise you that I will never leave you helpless or abandon you as orphans. Thank God. Psalm 68, 5 and 6 says, To the fatherless he is a father. To the widow he is a champion friend. To the lonely he gives a family. To the prisoner 
He leads into prosperity until they sing for joy. This is the holy God in his holy place. So this is the God we serve. So God wants to give you purpose in your heart. He wants to give you identity. He wants to free you from a critical, cynical, distrustful spirit. Because a person that has an orphan spirit is cynical, distrustful, and, 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 and they're, they're skeptical of people. So God wants to deliver you of that. Romans 8.15 says, The spirit you have, you have received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought, brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. So this is what God is doing in our hearts. So the first symptom of an orphan that we gave last week, if you, hear, if you were here last week, this is just review, is lying. An orphan has to lie. An orphan, because they don't like themselves, they think if they tell the truth about themselves that no one will like them, and that has been their experience. When they have, when they have said the truth, when they have exposed who they really are, they have gotten rejected. And because of that, they lie. So, really, they even tell themselves lies. It's how they cope. It's how they deal with life. But the truth is that God loves truth tellers. That people might not like you if you tell the truth about yourself, but God will love you. If you want God to bless your life, all you have to do is never tell a lie. And God will bless you tremendously. So, we need to be delivered of a lying spirit. And how many know we need to put on our belt of truth? I mean, if you don't have your belt of truth on, you have nothing to hold your pants up. And you're continually exposing yourself. The fact of the matter is, the higher the monkey climbs up the coconut tree, the more of his behind you could see. So listen, the Lord, the Lord loves you, but if you're a liar, he can't trust you. You understand that? So he will not trust you with anything. He will not trust you with people with money, with, with spiritual authority. So he loves you, but he can't trust you because you are a liar. So the Lord has to deliver us of that lying spirit, and he, he will because he loves you. And then the second symptom we gave last week was an orphan has no voice. An orphan has a heart, but they have no voice. A son has a heart, and he hears the father's voice. In fact, the father talks to him all day long. The father directs and corrects him. How many know that correction is not rejection? But an orphan receives everything as rejection. So, the Father wants to direct your life. But for an orphan, they have no voice of the Father to stop the demons. Their conscience is broken. Their conscience must be healed. Their conscience, without a conscience, they aren't able to hear the Father's voice. So, God wants to give you a voice. And he wants you to hear his voice all day long. He wants to walk with you. So that's the first two symptoms of an orphan spirit. The third symptom, and this is where we're going today, is fear and insecurity. Orphans have a fear and distrust of all authority. 
They have a chip on their shoulder. They cannot take correction from anyone. It's like Absalom in the Bible. The Bible says that David never corrected Absalom. He didn't parent Absalom. The Bible says he never asked Absalom, how are you doing? And because of that, Absalom became a rebel. A lot of times, orphans are rebels searching for a father. Many times, people that have huge chips on their shoulder are that way for a reason. How many know that people are the way they are for a reason? It's not by accident. They ended up that way. So, the distrust for people you might have in your heart, the, the continually wanting to push people away and and, and get in your own cocoon and isolate yourself and protect yourself from the outside world is you are that way for a reason. It's not an, it's not an accident you are that way. But there's no joy there. There's no life there. You will never be happy until you allow the Holy Spirit to release healing into your soul and make you whole. And until that day, you will continually be searching and wanting. So an orphan is the result of an unfathered spirit. It's wild and uncontrolled rebellion and defiance of all authority. So it carries within itself a fear and distrust of all authority. Secondly, in that it's insecure, tremendous insecurity, insecure about just about everything. An orphan carries within himself a complex of insecurity. They reject people, orphans reject people before they can be rejected. So, because of the feeling of being unwanted, Nobody likes me. I'm everywhere I go, I, I will be rejected. They reject everybody in their life. They make enemies of people, really, who God has brought into their life to bless them. They make enemies of those people because there's such a tremendous fear of being hurt. They're always looking for the next person who'll stab them in the back. They have a cynicism they carry with them about others, distrustful. So there's a serious distrust. And they ha constantly are in an identity crisis. They're constantly asking themselves, who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose? They, they, they're in a continual struggle for their identity. So God wants you to be comfortable in who you are, comfortable in your own skin. God wants you to be secure in the person he has created you to be. And to have that, you must be freed totally of every piece of an orphan spirit that might have gotten on you, either either. Physically or spiritually, how many of you can be a spiritual orphan? Where you reject, you were rejected by spiritual fathers, who you were really spoken negatively to by spiritual fathers. Maybe your physical father never rejected you, but maybe a spiritual father has and talked very uh, negatively about you. All of those things we have to be freed from so that the Lord can make us Whole and holy. If you've ever been through a divorce or a tremendous uh, upheaval, in you, that, that leaves wounds in our soul that we must be healed from. So fear and insecurity. An orphan will be insecure just for just about, they have insecurity for just about everything. 
But you don't have to live that way. God can free you from that in Jesus' name. Then the fourth symptom of an orphan is loneliness. Because of fear and insecurity, orphans are very lonely people. Because they feel like they don't belong to anyone. They actually have feelings that if they were to die, no one would care. That they feel like they are invisible to the rest of the world. And because that, they aren't able to express themselves how God has created them to express themselves. Now, let me explain it to you like this. How many know that the Holy Spirit, to flow through us, has to use our personality? So, if you have a personality that you reject, that you think others don't like, then God isn't able to use you like He wants to use you. Because he has to be expressed through your personhood, which is your personality. So the Lord has to heal all of the negative things that maybe you think about yourself, maybe that others have put there, so that he can flow rightly through you. Does that make sense? So that's why the soul has to be whole. For God to use you the way he wants you to use you, Your personality, you know, you you, you have to be just secure and okay in in who you are and what God has created you to be and not always look down upon yourself or think that you are not uh, 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 like that person. You know, um, in this culture, there is a disease that is created by social media that the comparison of lives and the uh, wanting to uh, be or have a life like somebody else who you think uh, has a certain life on social media, but they really don't. You understand? It is a, it is a, it is a, a, a false image. But it creates within, a, 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 especially a young person's soul, where there's a comparison and there's a wishing to have another life to where they can't be settled in who they are and where they are. There's a scripture in the Bible that says that, that uh, God has you where you are and with who he has you with, for a purpose, for a reason. It's God's plan. You are with the person that you are with. If you're married, don't wish you could have another spouse. God put you with that spouse. God put you in relationships with people here in this church. Don't be continually wishing you had a, a better life or a, a, a better this. It's okay to, to want to work toward a better marriage but not the comparison of, 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 man, I wish my spouse acted like that or looked like that. You understand? This is, the, this is a disease of our culture that we must be delivered from. And it might be even seasons where the Lord tells you that you need to shut down all your social media. Because comparisons will leave you to where you aren't satisfied with anything. Because it is an un, it's a fantasy what you compare in your life to. It's not even real. It's not even something that's attainable. Are y'all with me this morning? So especially for young people, they're, because they're impressionable, it's a trap of the enemy for you to continually compare yourself and wish that you could be somewhere else. Oh, I wish I was on the beach today. You're looking at pictures of the beach how they take so many vacations then you start getting critical of other people they're on vacations all the time you understand this is a trap of the enemy this will keep you distracted this will keep you out of your purpose this will keep you in in continually locked in criticism and cynicism 
Come on, it's all right if I talk real to you this morning. This is the disease. And we have to be freed from it. So, God wants you to give, a, give you a feeling that you belong, that you, that you have a family, that you're wanted, that, you, that people need you. That, that's what God wants. The enemy wants to isolate you. The enemy wants you to be a loner. He wants you to feel like you never fit in. He wants you to never feel comfortable around people. That's the plan of the enemy. How many know that a child of God who spends time talking to the Lord, the first thing to go from their life is loneliness. It's the first thing to go. When you have an intimate walk with the Lord, you will never be lonely again. You know, there's a difference between aloneness and loneliness. You can be alone with the Lord when you are in communion and companionship with the Lord. You can be alone with the Lord for days but never feel lonely. Because of communion and companionship. So one of the first things that go from your life when you walk with God is loneliness. Loneliness leaves you. It flees from your life. And you stop looking for another person to fill that in, in your soul. You understand? And, there never can be another person, no matter how great they are, to fill the role of communion and companionship that the Lord has within us. Your spouse will never live up to that. They will never be enough for you. No friend that you ever have, I don't care how great they are, can fill the communion and companionship of the Lord within you. You will always walk around lonely. I don't care how many friends you have on Facebook. So communion and companionship with the Lord frees us from loneliness. But an orphan struggles with communion and companionship with the Lord. You will struggle until you are freed from an orphan spirit and you receive the spirit of adoption and move into sonship. Then you begin to, then you begin to hear the Father's voice on a continual basis. So... Orphans, they don't have that. They don't have a place to call home. They don't do well in church. They don't do well at work. They will go from job to job to job and blame their bosses and blame their coworkers and blame this person and blame that person. It's because they don't do well with it. They don't do well anywhere and with anybody. They aren't happy at single. They aren't happy married. They aren't happy as a father. They aren't happy as a husband. They aren't happy as a mother. They are not happy anywhere. But you will never be happy for the rest of your life until you get freed from every piece of an orphan spirit. You won't. Because nobody will ever measure up. No church will ever be good enough. You always feel like people are leaving you out. People are always not including me. And, 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 and you always are the victim. And, and you got a victim mentality. And, and I'm always, I always get the, the short end of the stick. I, oh, I, I just got a bad hand in life. I, I just, no, no, no. If you get free to that victim mentality, God can make you whatever He wants to make you if you believe. The greatest symptom of an orphan is number five. It's an inability to bond. An orphan has an inability to bond. They cannot seem to bond to people emotionally. And because of that, they are capable of being cruel and walking away from relationships and never talking to that person again. How many know you cannot trust a person who cannot feel your pain? You can't trust a person who can't feel pain. Because they will walk away from you. They will cut you off in a moment of time and never talk to you again and never have any other thought about you. That's someone who has an orphan spirit. 
They have an inability to bond. And sometimes they even will like animals more than people. You ever known somebody? They don't like people. They'll say, I hate people. But they like animals more than people. Their best friend, you know, is a, is a dog. They bond better with animals than with people. I mean, that's not God. God has created us to have a relationship with people. <laughs> but when you're an orphan, you don't bond with people. So you can just walk away. It's like Judas in the Bible. I don't know if Judas was an orphan, but he had an orphan spirit on him. To betray the Lord for 30 pieces of silver and to just walk away, he had an orphan spirit. Of course, he was... He had the enemy talking in his ear. And that's one thing about demons when you have a wound. The devil attaches a demon, and eventually they will make you so miserable, you will want to commit suicide or kill somebody. How I many know what I'm talking about? Don't, don't give the enemy any foothold in your life. Don't allow him in your emotions, in your mind. Don't allow it. You have, to, you have to be vigilant about the Holy Spirit driving out all demons from your life in Jesus' name. And then the sixth symptom of an orphan is a restless spirit. An orphan has a wandering spirit. You can't get them to stay anywhere. They are restless and anxious. They're not happy anywhere. They're, they have a soul that wanders, searching for something that is missing. They continually think something is missing from their life. So an orphan says, I don't belong to anybody. No one wants me. So unadopted souls wander around searching their whole life. They will wander around searching. It's called wanderlust. It's that thing inside of a person that always wants to be somewhere else. Some of you here this morning, you want to be somewhere else. You want to, you want to be having lunch instead of being here this morning. But it's something inside of a person that is just never settled. They're never able to settle. And their emotions just, just keep moving and going, and, and because of that, they never can be happy. So where you'll see them. They'll come in for a few minutes, and then they'll have to go. They'll be there where, somewhere one day, and they'll have to leave. It's called wanderlust. And so it's always having to move. Can't stay in one place at too long at any time. Emotionally, mentally, physically, relationally, they just can't do it. It's a wanderlust. So the Holy Spirit wants to make you a son, wants to make you a daughter. But you have to receive the spirit of adoption. In a moment of time, the Holy Spirit can make your soul whole. Now, just looking out in the congregation this morning, all of us have had different upbringings. Some of you have had great parents, two parent homes, some single parents, some no parent, some absentee parents, and, 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 and all kinds of different people. But everybody, everybody, no matter how great your parents were, you have pieces, pieces of an orphan that only the Lord could heal 
and fill. Only he can heal and fill. Because there is no person that is able to be your all in all like the Lord is. So, in a moment of time, you can get the revelation of sonship or being a daughter of God. When I say sonship, it includes the women. And the Lord can totally heal every piece of you in one moment of time. How many believe that? So that's what's going to happen this morning. If you, if you were here last week and, you're, and, and you came up for prayer, and you say, I need to come again. I need this to, this to happen in my life. I want to tell you that every wound can be healed in a moment of time. Yes, it can. I'm going to read this scripture to you. Romans 8, 15, and 16. And if you have any of these symptoms in your life, we're going to pray that the Holy Spirit heals you this morning. Romans 8, 15, and 16. It says this, And you did not receive the spirit of religious duty, leading you back into the fear of never being good enough. But you have received the spirit of full acceptance, enfolding you into the family of God. And you will never feel orphaned, for he rises up within us. Our spirits join him in saying the words of tender affection, beloved Father. For the Holy Spirit makes fatherhood real to us. And he whispers into our innermost being, you are God's beloved child. So that's...